Father of a Heaven. Are you ready? Somebody come and just play bass music. 
and we really wanted some base runs and things like that which can happen. So now we have Anish. Mr. Nair on fire, so he does a great job for yes. us. Yes. And yeah, for, yeah. <laughs> we have Hamza Ghazi. Any I'm comments not. about your previous bass whom I liked so much? Uh, no comments. I used to make bass lines for him and I used to give him, I used to make him practice, do this, do that. No, it's fine. Dude, this is... And yeah, it's okay. And he was learning. He was even not... He had never learned bass as such. So he was very new with it. So can't blame him for it. Uh, but surely the way the attitude goes, he would really need a lot of change to go further in the music sense. Okay. Uh, what are the influences on the band, individually and as a band? As a band, primarily I think it would be Opeth and Poppy Pine Tree. Mm-hmm. Yes, I guess uh, Opeth, Poppy Pine Tree and... It's basically and progressive metal that we are more mm-hmm. interested in. Uh, as such, I listen to Cynic and uh, I listen to a lot of progressive metal bands. Symphony X and stuff like that. But when it comes to the common point where genre comes into the picture. We listen to more of a progressive type of a music. So, so. Well, see the you know if you see the song writing, you know it's 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 very contemporary as far as song writing is concerned. Okay, uh, wherein the whole song structure is very simplistic, but the whole feel to the band would rather be very very much progressive as well. Because he comes with a background story, thrash metal, Judas Priest. I'm more into 70s. 1780s. I come with a background, say, Porcupine Tree, Coldplay, Radiohead, you know, bands like these. And Hamza Kazi, of course, comes with all those cool. tools Meshuga, and Meshuga. So Robert, it's like, yeah. you know, we try to get those elements and try to fuse it. And Mix it up and make some new things. Exactly. Yeah, primarily, what we share is we want to communicate to the masses, as what our band name says, Koshish. It's an attempt to communicate ourselves to the masses and like it's just our music to be understood by the people irrespective of what drama we play it might be alternative it might be anything it might be reggae for that case you know the thing is when you say a hindi band uh the it's very it's very sad to listen to a uh, hindi band kya they have people have this uh, mindset that you know hindi band oh maybe really commercial stuff so they're just trying to make that change yeah, so we, when, you, when we play and then people come and listen to us and then they come and say, you know, we were, we never thought Hindi rock band could be like this. Some guys when they come and tell me, you know, I always thought Hindi rock was very underlined and now I feel, you know, it's coming out in that different sense that it never had been before. It's a good feeling. Some guys are so crazy, you know. They're like, oh, this band is so heavy. You know? <laughs> this, you know, yeah, heavier than your average Hindi band. That's right. Because and moreover, when you talk about Hindi band, it is more tilted towards the vocalist. It's only the vocalist who is like me controlling the whole, band. the whole band and the band is going according to his vocals. As a matter of fact, here in this, we have like very good instrumentalists and with that, we are fusing with good vocals. So that is something that this band uh, is rather connected to. Yeah. Who writes the lyrics and what are the lyrical influences? Well, as far as the lyrical content, it's all me. I mean, mm-hmm. as of now, there's nobody who's been writing for the band. I would be really happy if they would chip in, but they have totally, you know, given me the, say, what do you say, what do you call that? Yeah, it's like you would write the lyrics. Uh, I really draw a lot of inspirations from things that happen around me. And also there's this uh, uh, philosophical, psychedelic sort of uh, influences that I would rather bring into the lyrics, okay, which I haven't experimented as of yet, which I'm really going to do as, you know, after the... The, the new song that we're making. So, you know, it's it's very important that I write good lyrics. Especially songs like Rene Do, Hame Yahi and Raste are, are lyrically insane songs. Oh, oh, right. when, oh, it comes oh, to, when it comes to a song, each song that we play has some kind of emotion with it. Uh, as in, when we take an example of Go For Gai, 
it's it's a person who is in a mental turmoil in a in some kind of dilemma when we play it 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 develops that kind of an emotion and with that mange it really helps mange to uh, write the lyrics which would be in a way relating to what the music that we are playing is yeah in fact uh, i remember when he he hadn't really penned down no he had penned down the lyrics of woke over but he came and he played uh, i think the first yeah. or, or the first section and he said you know what do you guys feel when i play this so like he played it to me alone and i said it's very depressing it's very dark it's like it's like some guy on a deathbed or something i said <laughs> and then uh, he asked him this guy is like you know this it, it gives you the feeling that some guy is in this sort of confusion and he you know he doesn't know what to do and he like on three separate occasions and all of us felt the same thing you know some i mean not exactly the same thing but something like you know some guy who's having a lot of trouble or is at his death bed or so try to yeah, get out of it and what he had written was an actual story based on a guy who he knows so it actually you know it, it fits the music yeah. fits as well as the lyrics so both of them have the same uh, direction if you, if, if you see the song i guess it's not more than 12 15 lines all right and in those 12 15 lines if you just read and listen to the song the song is what 6 and a half 7 minutes and you listen to just 12 lines and it's in fact a whole story about a guy who was a really great fellow and then he grows up gets into drinking and all that it's totally fucked in life and then when he wants to get back to life is a society which has stamped him a drunkard or maybe a loser doesn't let him come up so you know it's is his fight against the society Outside. but wherein at the same part of time he remembers what kind of a guy he was you know it's like a thought that comes to him you know at one point of a time i was this i was this great fellow who was doing good in schools and uh, it's that guy is lost so who who am i now so woke ho guys that concept in the song it really boils down to great song Kal, I remember when you were explaining the concept. Next time, don't explain the concept like this because it it, it sounded very bad. You were wasting a lot of time, and the crowd gets very bored. Okay. I I got bored. You, many of the songs were not far ahead, but then I got pissed. Ki, kitna lamba bhakega mm-hmm. on the songs compared. So you will have to cut it down to like one sentence, two sentence sort of thing. Okay, I get it. Ah. Uh, You don't judge this because of yesterday's game. Ah, no, no. But I do it. I do it. I do it. Michael, bull ya fir. No, but na ki that was like very long. No. Ah, wo concise kare. Concise. I have to write down something and maybe speak it. Ah, just whatever each song ka one song. Paper mein likh. No, no, I don't do it. You know, I generally just say what comes to my mind. Anyway, next. So, ah, what are you guys influenced by classical music, Indian or Western? No, I am. Uh, not much. Hey, just just. Who are you? No, I. I... But the thing is, I when I was uh, I started uh, classical vocal training before getting into classical vocal training, I was I just stumbled upon Pandit Bhimsen Joshi, and I was like, there is this realm of music which Indian metalheads or whatever you call, you know, they consider themselves to be a uh, the the most hardliner music listeners. and somehow you know there is this genre indian classical which has not yet you know just uh, what do you say has been dripped down to the whole society of metal heads i guess it's it's such a level of such technical and such depth in their skill it's unmatchable and then it was it was it was just a strike of uh, it's just stash of gold that you have and you don't know and suddenly you find it you like you go just go crazy so i guess pandit bhims and joshi and those Suma people are people of great endurance i mean like they sing for more than one or two hours at a stretch that is something that i never seen any band doing it i mean like those guys are like totally uh, at the fate of their vocal cords crazy thing so, so i would rather say you really respect the thing yeah world. the thing is we always have this okay meshuga okay opet okay poppy pointy but we should always remember that there is long and you know there is this beautiful indian musical heritage that we are that we generally tend to miss behind this you know we can take a lot of cues from these guys who are also great musicians at a different level altogether in fact uh, tool is tool takes a lot of influence from indian classical and danny carey is a student of alok dutta who is a tabla player 
and a lot of my patterns are also very indian classical inspired i mean i got, i don't play any indian uh, instrument but they all uh, inspired by uh indian classical rhythms so yeah lot and even his solos actually he doesn't know it but his solos have a lot of uh like the indian feel in them you know they're not uh, your average uh, western solos or whatever so on the whole i guess there's a lot of uh, influence of indian classical music in in the sound of uh, kushish yeah um are any indian bands that you guys like in particular yes many no? many bands many i like uh, junky art no mother jane i like uh, there's this band called millennium i just heard them play once when megadeth was in india they were playing in the smallest stage and millennium kicked some serious ass mm-hmm. and they were the band that you know i guess the current scene would really want to see play which i guess is i i didn't find any band that kicked my ass you know the way i washed the way i had band it was like it was very like pretty old and you know the music is so energetic and you know you just go mad just go crazy even mother jane yeah well yeah. apart from mother jane i would even think of other bands you know which are really coming up like I, like zignema yes the mad was and even rosemary you know these young guys which i guess they are really talented i really admire the way they are you know coming up with their music and all that there are a couple of bands anything else the morning resurrection just for we use sheer dumb bass power <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and actually any band that gino banks plays in is is any band that i i would i would look up to and yeah i'm more actually not that that inspired by indian bands but exactly. indian jazz musicians indian jazz they, musicians yeah. like floyd yeah. then when it uh, comes to like uh, sheldon exactly yeah. sheldon. Uh, when it comes to bands like silk i mean uh, it's it's like it's a very underrated band i mean i don't think so much of the people have listened to it but uh, it's like it's carl peters on bass and shankar mahadevan giving out the carnatic blues and carl peters actually playing what shankar mahadevan is uh saying so in that way i would consider i'm like when it comes to jazz and carnatic it shows that they might be from different parts of the earth but when, when they are fusing it's <laughs> like one whole thing it's like one language exactly oh uh, what do you guys think uh about you know bands like burzum and gogor or not just typifying black metal but uh musicians which mix religion with music black metal is a very different kind of a genre as in many people do not like it because it's not that easy to get into that feel that dark feel it's, it's not that easy you know when you listen to black metal it gives you a different feel it's too dark it's so amazing um i don't know i find it stupid and it's uh, <laughs> oh yeah i'm sorry we love to yeah. नॉर्मल पीपल एवर but it's a gimmick that was made by his uh, your godfather trent reznor he actually went to trent reznor and said he wants to be a cool rock star like kurt cobain and trent reznor said screw you you know i'll think of a better image for you and that he gave him that image so it's it's just a marketing ploy you know it's and religion is something that can you know incite young people oh shit you are from religion let's go you know so that's what black metal is doing but there are some black metal heads that are actually you know uh, satanists or whatever but uh, yeah so those guys are like if they, if they're doing it if they actually mean it then it makes sense but if they're doing it for publicity then it's the most dumbest thing in the world most of the black metal bands do for publicity yeah, yeah so it's the, the, the thing is like no, when you listen to things that you know i mean satan will come and this will happen that will happen and god is this you despise god and hate and then you suddenly 
just turn your head and see the misery on the planet and you know you see yourself and then suddenly you see god satan and all this it's so it's 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 so idiotic and this thing is so sublime and it's like somebody suffering so you know coming to a point where you would write something i would rather say write in a context where you know it's realistic mm-hmm. i mean it should be a, there should be a realistic element to it you know uh, as far as me i really respect religion as an institution you know no matter what it is but then I, after some point i feel you know it was i musically i i do like some band musically but i really don't like the lyrical content sometimes you know it becomes really too overboard i just feels like which story to listen to rather that's what some latin bands write lyrics you know like like i guess emperor in balto but uh, my question was do you think it's right well uh, i i don't think uh, it's wrong i think it's stupid stupid you know, every yeah. country has its own interpretation i mean like when it comes to places like norway and sweden that is where black metal has been originated and uh, we are in a way just imitating what those guys are doing we yeah. don't even know what the hell it is all about we don't know ki what's the actual god that they pray to the forces of nature the pagan religion or whatever it is and despising uh, religion we don't know anything about it and what we are doing is just listening to uh, different black metal bands like marduk and emperor and all and we are just screaming the way that they are screaming and of course it won't turn out to be the same way as they are doing because it's in their blood when it comes to uh, when it comes to like actually absorbing the paganism or any kind of extreme yeah any kind of uh, extremities that they are talking about they say it from the heart and what we are doing is so in a way what i'm i what i mean to say is it's 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 all about interpretation uh yeah. black metal for us it's against the religion but for them it might be a new religion yes, no what you what you trying to say is basically if if they mean it then it's okay but if they don't then then it's really stupid right you get it if if they if they if they really mean what they say if they really hate god then it's fine you know but don't pose that you hate god just for publicity and whatever that that, that is really dumb i mean i i i've seen this girl she was like i i met her in a concert and she was wearing this cradle of filth t-shirt and all that and then i just came to her you listen to this band cradle of filth she was like no okay so i i said what do you listen to she was like i listen to nirvana you know as i listen to brand items and i was like oh my god so i i just asked her what are you doing with this t-shirt and you know all those black nail paints and all those emo thing is so she was speechless and you know she was in she was in in a position to even know what cradle of filth was and she was wearing the t-shirt so you know there are these people that you meet sometimes and you suddenly feel okay i mean you know it's totally useless to even communicate or try to talk Just wasting your time wasting your time exactly talking about emo uh what is your <laughs> That's not a final question. Yeah. Is that a question? Yeah. What is your opinion about commercial music and let's be specific here, you know, uh, especially about the new genre of metal called emo metal. <laughs> I, I find it funny. It. I hate emo. I, 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 yes. I, I hate. What is emo? It's all about makeup and music. Yeah. Yeah. They don't make music. They just do they makeup. Make up. And make up. Dance. <laughs> they make up with music. <laughs> they do that. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, you know kafa okay what, what do you think about the lack of women in the scene lack of women being men as a uh, not, not as a like not as a not as a like but as band members as oh band members. as as musicians should go yeah. now you'd see there is this uh, <coughs> you take indians into consideration metal is something that you would not grow up with in a normal indian family okay so when i was into music i started with kishor kumar and talat mehmood and all that and then i grew up and i you know there's this uh, long list of boy bands that came and i started listening to backstreet boys and you know boys boys and, boys and all that and then you go i just proceeded to savage garden and one day i just go and buy megadeth okay and i listen to megadeth and i'm like what the hell is happening you know that is this point where i came to came to know metal exists now as far as girls have you know take our supposedly considered 
you know they would rather be much more into indian classical or or, or pop pop they never venture into the metal scenario because they just don't absorb it i tried i have students who are maybe yeah. some girls don't find it comfortable listening to metal because they find it too noisy because maybe they are not too they don't aggressive. find it acceptable as a matter maybe they are not too aggressive or rebellious i guess so that i think it's a culture that is really you know taking the girls away from the metal scene uh koshish existed for 3 years What are two the years this? Ah, what? In these two years, ah, uh, what are the changes that you've seen, you know, uh, around you in the music scene? I mean, not just two years, but you guys have been in the scene for like a long time. Like Hamza goes back a long way. Ah, uh, Shrikan goes back a long way with XR. Anish also was in XR. So, ah, uh, I was in XR. He he was actually in. Ah, uh, he was in toxic. So, toxic toxic. So, what are the changes you've noticed in the scene and? Oh, lots of gigs like uh, yesterday i had to play two gigs one with uh, polynesian quest and one with koshish so that itself speaks a, a, a lot about uh, the improving gig scene i mean like 3 years back you wouldn't have ever imagined uh, two gigs in one day but you know now it has come to a point so the scene is changing in terms of uh, there being more venues to play gigs more organizers were organizing gigs uh there are many more, i mean there are a lot more bands like every every year there is an increment of uh new wave of bands ah there is like this huge wave of bands that uh, comes in uh so that also now people are more acceptable uh towards uh, originals in fact yes, exactly. now That's it's come exactly. to a point where i mean i play in uh, right now what Four four bands, okay, and all four bands are playing just originals. We, I, I mean, there's not a single cover that I'm doing with any of the band. That's it's not that I don't want. I mean, no, uh, that you know we can't do covers or whatever, but we just don't want to because people ah uh, want to listen to our originals. You know, stuff that we are composing as bands. Exactly. So that is the best thing that has happened. Ah, uh, and in fact, now it's come to a point where bands that cover. Are kind of looked down upon. Oh, you know, these guys are cover bands, but there are still a few venues that, uh, like the Hard Rock, Hard Rock Cafe. We got a lot of uh, shit from them for for playing an only original set. Okay, I mean I'm talking about workshop, sorry, but uh, now they're they're more uh, open to uh, to bands that play originals. So even the crowd is more open and everything. So now I think it's uh, improving. The scene is now better. Back to uh, what was. I think so, even as a musician, I think we all have grown up. Yeah, grown. But you know, I mean, that's. Uh, besides that, it's Fatados that has uh, really helped the scene. Uh, because earlier they used to they used to have like what two two or three kids on rent. Now they have like six or seven. So I mean, again, from just from that fact, you can see that the scene is growing. and uh, yeah i guess that's that's the the good the good thing about the scene i would rather say is you know initially when i used to go for concerts i myself would like you know uh, get into this mode if a band goes and covers say for example metallica you know that would be their image okay this band is metallica so you know do songs like metallica and things like that so i would go for their covers you know how well do they cover because i had never heard their originals and then when you suddenly see some bands when they start playing originals and they are so bad i mean as far as covers go it's okay they are playing well and then suddenly when you listen to their originals and they suck donkey balls we suddenly start introspecting i mean what is a good band and you know that was one thing that really changed my mindset so when i went next to it i just thought they would play a couple of originals you know any band for that case so that really shows what a bands made up of you know they Playing covers would never take you anywhere. So I'm really happy that the whole scene got the same vibe, and you know it's it's really improving as far as acceptability goes. As far as you know, uh, when I talk about acceptability, you know, taking bands like Workshop into consideration, I mean, three years down the line, I would never would have appreciated a band, you know, a band coming and saying like nobody will play, nobody will play, you know. But then you see the sublime. metal riffs behind it you know there are hardliners who still not like it there are people who still not like it exactly 
so you know there are people still not like it but you know you have to be a bit open minded to really accept new things you know again if you want to really listen to the heavy things there are parts which go like crazy heavy like shit killer stuff you go fuck head bang your you know neck off or something like that so i would think this is the great the the whole mindset opening up is a really important best thing that has happened happen this it's mature um okay uh, what are the problems that you see in the scene right now the biggest problems that you as a band are facing uh, venue i guess no uh, see there are still not enough venues uh for original music i mean uh okay. yeah uh, as in there, there are still a lot of these you know uh, old timers who would still want to go to hard rock or jazz by the bay and listen to their covers you know of the 70s and the 80s uh, which is why some cover bands are still in existence because and they obviously have preference uh uh they they get a preference in in venues like not just jazz by the bay and uh, you know the, the the funny thing about this is you know uh, as as we play original music you know if there is this guy who's organizing a gig comes and tells me dude i need a band would you like to play i said okay so how much do you offer they would say no do we are working on a really tight uh, yeah, budget right. so original guys who play original music are supposedly the ones who not getting money you know and the ones who are covering yeah, they get they yeah. get money it's so fucking funny you know you cannot be doing this you know you have to go out and give money where the you know just put your money where the mouth is you know this is the original scene you if you don't you know uh, charge your money yeah. because it's not a joke coming out with your original stuff you know it's like it'll take a month time i remember i um, know one of our songs it took a yeah. damn months you know to make one single fucking song and you know when you come out and say are yaar dude ye gana hai na yaar ye to thoda original hai na yaar tum log thoda cover ko i feel very bad you know? and yeah, they don't understand when they coming, ask you to play for free it's annoying it's, you know? it's, it's coming back to the topic it's like the main problem that most of the musicians are facing is music can't be the breadwinner for them it's like uh, they have to do some some other kind of a job mm-hmm. that would yield them money and they play music for their passion or the for their or... for their detox or something like that so so the main thing that is going on is people have not actually started accepting musicians as musicians yeah people don't respect much if i am a bass guitarist they wouldn't like to know anish the bass guitarist or something like that they would rather want to know okay anish you uh, you work for an advertising agency okay and you play bass guitar okay and so yeah yeah that's good that's good you're doing multiple things at a time so people have not started accepting musicians as musicians as just the musicians people want a variety of thing and and for that matter music can't at least for now it is not a breadwinner for them yeah so the main thing that the, all bands are facing now or any band which is facing now is the crunch yeah the money crunch whatever they are whatever they are earning or whatever pocket money or stuff it is going in music but music is not yielding them money as such they are just playing for passion i would the thing is this whole uh, scenario of not wanting to pay for gigs or music uh the internet has basically screwed the indian scene <laughs> because <laughs> nobody wants to buy an i just want to download yeah because free it's... download yes i'll do it and by the way like thanks for people actually ask me dude where can i download the workshop album from i mean have some shame you know buy it if you have the money don't fucking smoke that cigarette packet don't smoke five cigarette packets you save 300 bucks and yeah. buy the fucking album it's on yeah. download it or if you want to download it go find out yourself you don't ask me is ridiculous you know and i i you know i support band i i i love supporting the bands that that inspire me and i save up i don't go out i don't eat out i save money to buy like band t-shirts or or like brand or, or albums i order them from abroad i you know i pay for the shipping and here they don't want to fucking support like a 200 or 300 rupee cd they don't want to pay 100 bucks to enter to watch a band 100 bucks and there are people who pay 5 and a half thousand to go watch shakira shake her boobs but they won't they won't go pay 100 Shikha bucks Boop. to come watch a band you know it's it's gone huh? yeah it's it's gone <laughs> really yeah they'll they'll pay 7 and a half thousand to go watch acorn just you see know? him dancing 
But hundred, I mean, how much is hundred bucks? Maybe you know, we, you know, we need some Shakiras to be dancing around when he plays. Exactly. So we need that is. So that is our stage even if they can't play. That is one uh we have one chick who can play. Arjun's there, so make him join the two chicks. So that is uh the biggest problem and the another problem is uh fuck all sound. Oh god. Oh god, you know when when sound comes into picture, you know I uh you you have to just Miserably strike this uh, what do you say you know balance balance between miserable sound and okay sound. Okay. Okay. There's no good sound. Yeah, there's never never good sound except rare, except rare. when there's sound dot com. Yeah, exactly. But that that happens only at big gigs at or at art rock. And Drago comes into picture. Things like that. No? Yeah, uh, Drago. All these. I mean, obviously, at you know the big uh, guns in the yeah in they the they have good sound, but otherwise. Any college festival it will have all crappy bad, sound, bad, bad sound and uh, and the lack of sound engineers. They don't know. They don't know what they're doing. They have this twenty-four channel console in front of them. They're just tweaking knobs. But they don't know what what happens if they tweak those knobs. You know, so that and uh, yeah, that these three I think are the main issues that uh, and yeah and expensive uh, instrument uh, instruments. Basically, because of the our, our you know uh, customs uh, rules, uh, rules, rules, laws, laws. the e- e- equipment that we get is is like about what forty percent higher than the list price of the equipment that you get in the US. Oh God! I never you know? that. Yeah, and the list price uh, and musician's friend offers like forty percent off. On the list price, so you can only sit and calculate how how Thanks much we are paying, you know, like extra for for the same same uh, equipment. That goes for the government. Huh? Yeah. What the politicians? Same thing. Same thing. Do it. But what what Patados is doing is really great because they're they're giving loans basically to uh to musicians where where if they're buying something really expensive, they can pay over a span of two years. So that is is the only good thing that is uh, that has come out of this, you know, come exorbitant uh, price uh, hike <laughs> of instruments, basically. Like it top it all, it's a recession. You know, so. Yeah. So it's a fucking jam. Bal ke si tar kar rahe camera mein record hua ho. Chhod na rehne ke liye. Kya kya? So that's the bal ji. अरे वो ये हो गया था. लड़के लोग कंगी लेके करते हैं वहीं से. कोशिश You know, it took a really long time. The amount of efforts that went in, a lot of efforts. Lot of efforts, and yeah. I see it's coming into shape now. And I really feel we can go places. You know, the music has got lots and lots of potential. Uh, working on some new originals, which are really out of the world. You know, taking into consideration the Hindi or whatever cliched Hindi. Hindi mindset. Yeah. Hindi so, rock mindset. I don't know how it boils down to. So future plans, I guess. Basically, now we've plans. got uh, six, no, seven, seven, uh, seven complete tracks. Uh, no, eight. Eight. Yeah. This is working But, on eight. Yeah. So we, we we plan on writing like four more, coming up with at least twelve tracks, and then uh, recording demos, and you know, hopefully going around to producers to help produce an album. Actually, I've got a few contacts. So all we have to do right now is. Just complete those twelve tracks, you know. Just finish them off, practice them, like as uh, tight as yeah. I mean, get as tight on them as possible. Then approach these guys, and then you know, hopefully record an album, and then we see what happens. It's a really so, long process. Yeah, so it, it's a long process. I don't know what will happen after we make the album. You know? Yeah, because yeah. people don't pay. Pay. So, so some truth will come and ask me, 
Tout le monde est en train de se faire. Tout le monde est en train de se faire. Tout le monde est en train de se faire. Tout le monde est en train de se faire. Tout le monde est en train de se faire. Tout le monde est en train de se faire. Tout le monde est en train de se faire. T